Welcome to the formal parlor of the Browns. Margareta and John Brown entertained many people here during their years, local and state officials, as well as some very famous people. In 1825, General Lafayette stopped by. Margareta wrote a letter to her mother-in-law that said, General Lafayette spent about an hour with us in the most delightful conversation. Her niece, Elizabeth Humphreys, was here for that visit as well. She hosted Sunday school class in this room before the Presbyterian Church across the street was built. In 1819, Margareta was elected the superintendent of the Sunday School for Girls. She herself wrote many of the publications used during those classes, including one called Food for Lambs. This was a dictionary of religious terms for small children. The furnishings in the formal parlor reflect a very affluent family. We know from research that there was carpet on the floors originally because the uh, nail holes. We know that the walls were paper and that they had very heavy drapes hung at the windows. What you see today are reproductions of what you would have seen in a very stylish home in the early 1800s. The crown molding above the, uh, at the ceiling, the arches above the windows, as well as the very ornate carving above the door going out to the hallway, all indicate that a very affluent family lived here. Those weren't things that you would find in your ordinary homes in the early 1800s. The mahogany piano was not original to the Brown family, but we do know from letters between friends and family that they really enjoyed music and more than likely had a piano in this room, as most formal parlors did back then. This one was made in Frankfurt. The whale lamp on top of the piano burns whale oil. There are two more matching ones on the mantel. Those were gifts for the wedding of Margareta and John. And the portrait above the piano is the one of Mason Brown. Mason was their firstborn son. He inherited Liberty Hall. The painting was done by Chester Harding. In the corner, we have John's original desk. This is made of cherry. It has a dot and dash molding on it, which is very fancy at the time. We also have his ink wells and a copy of the letter that John wrote prior to moving to Liberty Hall to resign as the representative of the District of Kentucky in the Virginia's General Assembly. He resigned that position because Kentucky chose him as one of the first two senators in the newly formed state. John Edwards was the second senator. Some of the other original furnishings to the Brown family, the card table, these nice fancy chairs, they have gold around some of the uh, legs of the turned legs of them. We have tables that are original, the tea table. And one of my favorites is this bench. We thought that this bench was originally made by inmates at the penitentiary. We've since learned that it more likely was made in a private shop in either Lexington or Louisville. It's made of various woods. It has churned legs. They were painted black and red stripe at one time. And there's a very fancy gold leaf decoration on the front of it. It might be a tobacco leaf, which was a very important crop in Kentucky at the time. We also have two portraits of John. The smaller pastel was done by James Sharples. The larger one was painted by Matthew Harris Jewett. Jewett was a very famous painter of his time. He always had his subjects make eye contact, as John is doing in this portrait. Thanks for joining us today. If you'd like to schedule an in-person tour, please visit our website.